Hello everyone and welcome to Dwarf Fortress for Dummies 2012 Part 5. I'm getting to the point in the game where it's going to be a little bit more difficult to stick to a rigid curriculum, but I'm going to try to devote most of this episode to military and industry. Why those two things? Well, having an effective military is pretty dependent on having a successful and productive metal industry. So I'm going to kind of show you guys the basics of what you need to do to produce metal and then how you take that metal, make it into weapons and then how you make a military that uses those weapons. So let's focus on the metal part first. What do you need? First, you need metal ores. So let's go down here and I'll show you what ores look like. If you're using the Phoebus tile set then you're gonna have metal ores that look like this. They look like tiny gems and if you press K and look at them you'll see that they'll have a name like limonite or hematite or whatever. So once you have these ores, you need to smelt them. Smelting basically just means melting. You're gonna smelt it down and put it into a bar and then those bars can be forged into metal uh, weapons, armor, tools, and things like that. So when you have the ores, the first step is to make your smelter. I've already done it, but my smelter is right here. The way that you build a smelter is with B for build, and then instead of workshop, it's going to be E, I believe, for furnace. And then you've got these options here, wood furnace, smelter, glass furnace, and kiln. Now, before you can melt things down at a smelter, you're going to need fuel. And what you're going to have to use for fuel is charcoal. And charcoal you make at a wood furnace. So, in order to even make the metal bars, you need to have both a wood furnace and a smelter. So, the smelter, whoops, the smelter I've already built here. Sorry, the wood furnace. And you can add tasks here that are going to consume a unit of wood and make either a unit of ash or charcoal. For our purposes, we want to make charcoal. So, if you've got an excess of lumber, you're going to assign a bunch of charcoal to get produced. I've already got some. And then you can come to your smelter and you can add a task to smelt some ore. And you can see what kinds you actually have access to because they'll show up gray here instead of red. So I've got limonite ore, which is an iron ore. I've got native silver ore, which produces silver. Cassiterite, I believe, is copper and same with tetrahedrite. So iron uh, tends to be a better metal to use in copper. I think that iron, don't quote me on this, but I'm pretty sure that iron is the second best metal for military purposes as far as armor and weapons goes. Uh, only, second only to steel. There's actually one thing better than that, but it's kind of a spoiler, so I won't talk about it. If you're a veteran, you know what I'm talking about. If not, you're in for some fun when you discover what that is. Um, so there is an exception to this rule, and that is, I believe, silver, which makes terrible edged weapons, does actually make really good blunt weapons because it's so dense. But if you're going to stick to swords and axes and spears and things like that, really what you're shooting for is iron. And to see all the different ores that you can melt, or smelt rather, into iron, uh, you can check out the Dwarf Fortress wiki. It's just dwarffortresswiki.org. Alright, so, I've already got some bars, but um, when you smelt these, you're going to see that you've got bars. The way to see how many you have is actually to press Z for status, and then come over to Stocks, and then you should be able to see how many bars you have. And bars are hiding right here. So you can see I've got iron, silver, copper, lay pewter, and charcoal bars in these quantities. Um, if I haven't already covered it, I don't remember 100%, but I don't know if I covered bookkeeping, so let me just address that really quickly. Bookkeeping is how you improve the accuracy of your counts in the stock screen. Um, and the way you have to do it is you have to appoint someone as a broker, or sorry, not a broker, a bookkeeper. Once you've done that, you need to make an office for them that has a table and a chair. When you have the chair, you can turn it into an office then you can assign it to your bookkeeper, who is actually also my chief medical dwarf right now. And then you have to come and do one more thing. 
you have to come in here, uh, bookkeeper, and you have to press S for settings, and then you have to set your counts to highest precision. It's going to take a little while. They're basically going to lock themselves in here um, and count up all your stocks. But after a while, you'll have high accuracy, and then you'll know. Anyway, okay, so that aside, let's go back to the metal. Now that I've got some charcoal and some bars, I can start making weapons. So I've got uh, order on here to forge a copper short sword because I've got a ton of copper. So I'm just going to add a couple more of these. Um, I have iron too, but I accidentally made a ton of copper, so it's fine. I'll just make some copper swords. And now, you know, as long as I have somebody with the weaponsmithing labor enabled, they should come in here and start pumping out weapons. All right. Um, I also have some charcoal orders going on here. So that's the basics of how you make weapons and armor. Now let's get to the fun part, military. I'm probably going to cover this over multiple episodes because uh, this, this particular episode is probably not going to go the full 30 minutes and the topic of military is pretty complicated. So let's just jump right into it. First of all, military screen is M, so you're going to press M. Um, I have no. I have a militia commander. Doesn't show up here uh, as having their own squad because I've just appointed them via the noble screen here, back in N for noble, and so this person is my militia, militia commander. So when I go in here, I want to create a new squad. So I'm going to press C. This is your first thing you're going to do. You're going to create a new squad. I'm going to make a squad of marks marks dwarves. So we'll give them, once you do this, you're going to have to choose a uniform uniform for them. Uh, they're not stuck with this, you can change the uniform later, but since I want them to be uh, crossbow dwarves, I'm going to give them the archer uniform for now. So this, oh, it automatically made my militia commander the squad leader, which is fine, because he's actually a marks dwarf. So what we need to do is add a couple more dwarves to the squad. So I'm going to go through here, and if you look up in the upper left, you can see what kind of proficiencies they have already. So I'm going to look for ones that already have Mark's Dwarf. Um, it's just going to give me a little edge there. So this guy's already a competent Mark's Dwarf. This guy is a novice. I'm just going to look for a few. I'll go for five for now. And there's competent Mark's Dwarf. Eh, if I have more Mark's Dwarfs, I might as well get some more. You can never have a military that's too big. Unless you don't have weapons for everyone, then that could be a problem. There's another Mark's Dwarf, and then we'll look for another one here. A lot of no relevant skills. And then finally an adequate Mark's Dwarf. So here we go. I've got a whole bunch of Mark's Dwarfs of varying capabilities. So there's my squad. This squad is called the Foggy Tomes. I can rename it if I want. So I can press N and we'll call it the Bow Dwarves. Alright. So, just for the sake of simplicity. And then we'll rename this Melee. I made a Swords Dwarf squad as well. So I will rename this one as well. The Sword Storms. Okay, so now let's look at all this stuff here. This can be pretty intimidating. And I should mention before I get too far that this is actually one of the few screens in the entire game that you can navigate almost entirely with your mouse. So you see I can click on these here. Which is nice, but not necessary really. So all right, first let's look at uh, equip. So here um, you can see that I've got, these are my squads, these are the people in the squads, and then these are the equipments that have been assigned to them. This indicates which of the things they actually have equipped. So let's quickly go back over here to Bow Dwarf, and we'll look and see. So you can see here, this archer uniform basically means that they're going to be equipped with these things. So leather headwear, leather legwear, 
leather handwear, footwear, a leather shield and buckler, and then individual choice ranged weapon, which is typically going to be a crossbow. And out of all of my dwarves, none of them are actually equipped right now, which is fine because we haven't uh, given them a training schedule yet. So Now, if I had wanted to, say, assign a specific weapon or you know change a piece of armor on one of these guys, what I could do is I could come up here and change these pieces of armor individually. I can also change uniforms for the entire squad by going to the Uniforms tab and then editing these. So the uniforms are basically just a preset of individual items which you can apply to people. Um, and just to show you what I mean here, you see when I go to the equip screen I've got assign uniforms up here. I can press capital U and then instead of assigning individual equipment like that other, the other way to do it, I can change their entire uniform here. And these are presets, like I said. So sword and metal is one that I've already configured. This is basically just metal armor, but instead of individual choice, I made them take swords, because the dwarves that I chose for that squad had some proficiency with swords already. So this, you know, I'm not, again, I'm not going to go too crazy with detail here, because this is kind of a complicated subject, and you're probably going to end up having to do some reading on it anyway. Um, but that's the basics. If I want to change a uniform, I have to do it in here. I can choose the preset that I want to change. Say, for instance, in uh, the archer, or sorry, the metal uniform, instead of having an individual choice melee weapon, I wanted to replace this with axe, right? So whenever I assign the metal armor uniform, it's going to default to assigning them an axe. What I would do is I would press enter up here to delete the individual choice melee item. And then I would add a weapon with capital W. And I would go down and choose, let me go over here. I would go down and choose battle axes. Now you see that's done. So whenever I assign the metal armor uniform to a new uh, squad or individual within a squad, Instead of choosing whatever weapon they want, they're going to have a battle axe instead. So hopefully that makes sense. Each item can be changed, and you can even you can even assign specific weapons. So if you happen to make like an artifact weapon or something of that that nature, you could even assign it specifically. So right. So um, let's go to the next thing, which is supplies. Um, when you're when you're military is out on an assignment uh, or following an order. Let's say I post them, I station them somewhere where they can protect you know, a choke point or something like that. Um, while they are on duty, they won't abandon their post um, under most circumstances. I'll, I'll get into that in more detail in a minute, but um, because of that they can often become hungry and thirsty and you can actually tell them to carry food and drink. Uh, if you have them to carry any drink, they can take booze or water. You can say don't carry any water. You can tell them to carry water. Same thing over here for the swords dwarves. You can tell them how many food to carry. One, two, three. I can just tell them to take just one food. That's for the bow dwarves. And I've basically done the same thing for the swords dwarves already. So that's what that is. Uh, in order to carry drinks, they're going to need water skins, which are made out of leather. If they're going to take a alcohol, they need to have a flask, which is made out of metal. Ammunition. So here is where I can assign ammunition to different squads. So hunters have already been assigned some stuff. Let's go over to the bow dwarves. So I see here that they've uh, got, they have um, 250 bolts assigned to them. So uh, I believe that uh, bolts stack in units of 25, and I have 10 people, or 20, 10 dwarves in this squad. So it's already given me exactly the right amount for each dwarf to have a quiver full of 25 bolts. And you can see here that they're flagged to be used in combat and in training. I can toggle this if I want to, for instance, assign bolts that they'll only use in training. Let's say I have a bunch of excess bone and I make a bunch of bone bolts. I can then basically add a new entry 
Um, so here I'll show you. I can go C for add item. I'll go bolts. Uh, and then I'll change the material of these to bone. So now bone bolts I can unflag for use in combat and they'll only be, only be used in training. And then I can change the material on these to wood and tell them to only be used in combat and not in training. And then I would just change the bone bolts quantity up to the maximum cap. So there you go. So now they'll use the bone bolts, which I'll have a bunch of for training, and the wood bolts in combat. Now I actually don't care whether they use, you know, bone or wood or whatever for combat or training. So I'm going to just remove bone bolts here. I'll change the material to any material. So now it's just bolts, and I'll reassign it for training. You see, the swords dwarves have no ammunition assigned because obviously swords don't shoot bolts. Alright, schedule. Here is the kind of tricky part. So, first of all, what, is, what does this actually mean? I'm going to escape out of this for a minute to show you uh, what, how you actually change the schedule so you can kind of see how that works. If I press S for squads, this is how I actually interact with my military units to assign them orders. Um, so let's select my swords dwarves, A. Here, the schedule, active training, is where I can basically tell the game whether I want them to be training. Um, it's basically like, imagine your dwarves are National Guard units, right? They're not training all the time. They're going to have regular day jobs, but they're going to be weekend warriors, right? I'm going to set up a schedule where, you know, uh, once every other month, they're going to train, you know, and then on off months, they'll just do whatever they want. So you can also just have them be, um, you know, military dwarves year-round, but a lot of dwarves will get unhappy thoughts from that. So one of, one of my dwarves actually killed a few red panda men and women who are threatening my fortress, and he got happy thoughts from the slaughter. So, you know, he's a psychopath, and that's okay. Um... If we could find more dwarves like that, that'd be great. I'd keep them active and just have them slaughtering all the time. But a lot of time they won't like, uh, you know, being training all the time. All right, so um, here I have them in active and training already. But if I go down to B, you can see that by default, my bow dwarves are inactive. And this means that they're just going about their day jobs. Um, if I were to activate them and put them in active training, um, I basically just uh, created a new alert, you know, that is going to make them do what I tell them. And what the schedule does is tells them what to do when I change that. So let's go back to the military screen here, and let's go to schedule. So I want to make sure I have the right squad selected, so I can page between the squads with the arrow keys. So here you can see, first of all, here's a schedule. So what what are they doing when they are active and training? Okay, um, I can change this to inactive with my asterisk key. That's going to change the schedule. I can even create a new schedule if I want. So um, for now, inactive is what I want it to be. No scheduled order, they're just going about their business. Um, when I want to activate them, I want them to be training off and on. So I can show you how to do that. So Swords Dwarves, I've already set these guys up. There's seven squad members, and basically what I've done is said that every month, for any given month in the game, I want at least four of the seven to be training. I want them to be able to sleep in their own rooms at will, as opposed to in the barracks. And when they're inactive, when I don't have them training, I want them to stay in their uniform, so they're not having to you know, run to their room and grab all their weapons and equipment and stuff. Uh, when I activate them, because that's vital time that they could be killing things. So the bow dwarves, I want to set up a training schedule as well. Um, I'm going to do an on-off schedule just so I can show you how that works. So here, uh, let's let them, when they're inactive, let's let them be uniformed so they always have their crossbows and stuff on them. Let's let them sleep in their rooms at will. Because I have 10, um, I want to have a couple of them not needing to train so that they can take a you know take a sleep break or whatever 
go eat and grab some food so they don't get unhappy. They'll just go in shifts. So I'm going to maybe set it so that at least seven of the ten are training at any given time. And the way I'm going to do that is when I have this highlighted, I'm going to hit E for edit order. And then I'm going to turn down the number of soldiers that have to follow this order at the time. When I finish, I need to press shift enter. And now you can see that uh, in the month of granite, they're going to be training seven minimum. Then here, we'll have, uh, I'm going to remove, I'm going to cancel this order to train. So there's no scheduled order. And I'm going to just do that on alternating months, like so. And then I want to copy this order. So you see, on the off months, the rest of them are set to 10 minimum, but I only want 7. Rather than go and in, uh, individually edit all of those, I can just copy the orders here with C, and then I can press P to copy it into the other training months. And we should be good. So um, I can also give order, right? Um, if I want them to do something in slate other than train or no scheduled order, I'll show you what the other orders are. Uh, they typically have to do with uh, defending burrows, right? Um, and this is a little more complicated. There's also patrols and things they can do. But uh, I won't go too much into that. That's going to be more advanced. But for now, you've got the basics, right? So let's exit out of here. And let's set our bow dwarves to train right now. We'll set them to active training. Now, I'm not actually sure how many crossbows I have. It may be that I don't even have enough crossbows for everyone. Uh, let's see, I've got... I had to make some wooden short swords for training because I didn't have enough metal short swords. But uh, let's see, crossbows. I've got one, two, three, four. Only four crossbows for ten dwarves. So I need to make some more of those. What I'm going to do is make a bowyer, which is another workshop come up here, we will build workshop, Bowyer's workshop, and then we'll build it over here where I've got some extra room by this ammo stockpile and we'll make it out of chalk. And now as long as I've got somebody with the correct labor enabled, which should just be a Bowyer or bow making or something like that, they'll come over and make this and then I can pump out some more crossbows. Uh, so let's set those bow dwarves to train. Now the last thing I'll show you is how you make a uh, an archery range because that's how they're going to train in their archery. Um, they will get levels in crossbow uh, if they are hunters and things so another thing I can do is set them so that in their off months they're hunting and then they're going to keep training even when they're not training, if that makes sense. Uh, but just to show you how this works, let's dig out, let's dig ourselves out a little archery range here. So we'll dig it right up here. And it needs to be big enough for seven maximum, so I'll make it kind of big. And then let me pause while I get this dug out, and I'll show you how to do the rest. Okay, so I've got this space cleared out. So what I can do now is I can build some archery targets. And the way that you can do this is by just building them. You don't actually need to make them at a workshop first. You can just build them right out. So B and then capital A for archery target. And then I'm going to put them against this wall here. And then I'm going to just build a couple more. And I'm going to do one other thing that is going to help me keep any of the arrows, or the bolts rather, that get shot at these so that they don't get wasted. So that should be enough there. That looks like eight targets. So we'll resume and let those get built. Uh, the other thing I want to do is build channels. So if arrows uh, hit a wall and fall onto the ground, they often break. Um, but for whatever reason, you can actually make channels which are a little holes in the ground that will kind of catch bolts. And I put one on either side of these targets and one in front. And then, oh, maybe I have to move that stuff there first. 
then uh, I can reclaim the bolts that fall in there. So let me just dump a couple things here real quick. And then I'll make a zone to dump the rock into. Call this garbage dump G. There. So now somebody will come build these, and I'll pause again for a second, and I'll show you, once you have the targets built, how to actually turn them into an archery range. Okay, so all of my channels have been dug, and all of my archery targets are in place. Now, I'm going to interact with one of these, and I'm going to turn it into a range. So I'm going to press R, and then I'm going to press a plus sign to make this bigger, so I get real nice and big. And then we are going to choose a shooting direction. So right now it's set to choose uh, shoot from left to right, which is not how we want it. So I'm going to press W, so from bottom to top. So my dwarves will stand here and shoot towards the top. And then we have to also set it to allow a given squad to train. So obviously I want the bow dwarves to train here, so once I have it highlighted then I can press T for train. And then I'll just add on individual and squad equip here too. And then, in theory, while my squad is training, they will shoot at these targets. So I will bring up that Bow Dwarf Squad B, and we'll set them to active training and resume. Now, this might be an off month, so it might not be their training month, but when it is the proper month, then they'll be shooting at these targets. I just had some merchants leave on their journey, so I missed an opportunity to show you trading. But that will probably be the topic for the next one. So, yeah, just to reiterate, uh, it's never too early to get your military started. Uh, a lot of times that I have lost a fortress to goblin invasion and things like that, it's been because I wasn't properly equipped to deal with the threat. And having an effective military earlier rather than later can really help you out. So, I mean, you can always have traps, right? Like, I've got a ton of traps here. I've got cage traps and rockfall traps and stuff. But, you know... Having a military, uh, without having a military, you can't reach out and touch the enemy. You have to wait for them to come to you, and you have to fight on their terms. Uh, there are some other things that you can do. You can build defenses, and I'm actually going to probably cover that in a subsequent episode about how to build more defense, uh, advanced defenses. But just to show you one thing I've done, I actually built a wall around my primary entrance so that I can lock everything down in the event of a siege. Probably whoever is outside the wall is going to get jacked over because they're not going to be able to get in. But, um, you know, I can deal with that. So, what I actually did was I built a drawbridge here. So, uh, you when you build these bridges, you have to choose whether they retract, in which case they... It doesn't really matter which direction they retract. It's just kind of understood that they pull into a slot and basically disappear for the purpose of whatever is standing on top of them. But you can also make it so they raise. This bridge, I have it set to raise to the north. So when I do that, this bridge, which is four or five units long, basically flips up and becomes you know, a wall here. So that nothing can get inside here unless it comes from above. So eventually I would build you know, a floor up here, and then maybe some fortifications and things so that in the event of a siege, I could even send some bow dwarves up here. So that's probably one of the next things I'll do. Build floor up here, put some fortifications up along the top, and then have my bow dwarves be able to shoot out. But um, what I would do then, when I locked down the fortress, is I would have one other entrance somewhere that would look enticing. Uh, goblins or whatever would have, their pathing would tell them that, okay, this is unavailable to get in this way, so the only other way in is going to be through this passageway. And then to have a bunch of traps and ballista and, you know, bottomless pit with spikes and magma and whatever other kinds of devious things you can think of. So that's a really basic, quick and dirty look at uh, how to produce some metal, weapons and armor, how to set up basic military stuff, and, uh, and there you go. So uh, before the episode's over, I just wanted to have a couple of thank yous. Um, there was a message in my inbox the other day from someone named Atrot88, a YouTube user, a subscriber who had made a logo for me, and I really liked it, so I'm using it. So thank you, Atrot88, whoever you are. You're a swell guy or girl, and I really like that logo. Um, also, I wanted to say thank you to Simon Swerver, 
who produces uh, some of the music, or actually most of the music, I guess, for the SoundSense plugin. And actually, the music clip that I put in the intro is actually from one of his songs, and the title is ZTIQ. You should really check out his music, it's awesome. He's got a great sound, and uh, I'll put a link in the description to his SoundCloud page so you can check out some of his tracks. Alright, until next time.